where we were, so I'm going to try to do today is finish up talk on the exclusion principle, and then on to the uh, vector model of the atom. This is also known as term symbols. The ones you know and love from uh, inorganic chemistry. Now, if there's something I'm doing here that doesn't turn up, it doesn't look like, say, hey, Dr. Kalo, I can't really see what you're writing, let me know, because we'll get that taken care of now. All right, so exclusion principle. Remember what I said was, that it, it's the exclusion principle. We've got a couple of things going on. Actually, the first is indistinguishability of electrons. Electrons are indistinguishable, number one. And then number so I, the wave function has to represent that. And then number two, that uh, I'll write it sort of mathematical terms. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, if there's an operator, P, one, two, which is permutation operator. switches labels of electrons, then P12 operating on psi 1, 2 is equal to minus psi 2, 1. That <clears throat> Remember, stay in the screen. Um, oh, I don't need to. So that if I take this permutation operator, changes my labels, then the wave function has to change size. The thing I'm going to we'll hit when we hit uh, group theory, as we talked about, that group, um, it's psi squared that's important, or psi squared is the same, still the same, and that's the real thing that we look at. So those two cases. Now, I mentioned then with indistinguishability, we had the helium wave function, helium spin functions. R. Uh, so alpha one, alpha two, alpha one, beta two minus alpha. 2 beta 1, I think I wrote it as, yes, alpha 2 beta 1, alpha 1 beta 2 plus alpha 2 beta 1, and then finally beta 1 beta 2. <clears throat> and the thing with each of these is that, so I'm going to ask of these, which of these are symmetric and which are anti-symmetric with respect to flipping the labels. This is symmetric, alpha alpha is symmetric. In other words, alpha two, alpha one equal to alpha one, alpha two. I think you can probably see well, and then beta 1, beta 2 is also symmetric. This is also symmetric. So if I take this, if I write it as uh, alpha, now I'm going to switch alpha 2, beta 1, plus alpha 1, beta 2. Okay, alpha's up, beta's down. This is also symmetric. 
Finally then, this term though is anti-symmetric. Because if I take the labels and interchange them, I get minus the wave function. So it's a little more difficult than that general chemistry picture. <clears throat> so now where are we going to go with this? These are helium spin functions. And helium, I mean two electrons. And we're now going to take this. So this is the spin function. Our entire wave function is a product of spatial function and spin function. And so what do I mean? When I write 1s2, what I mean is 1s electron 1, 1s electron 2. And what does that mean? Well, I'm going to take that. That's actually, um, this is psi 1, 0, 0, 1 psi 1, 0, 0, 2, but then I'm going to multiply it by a spatial, but by a spin function. So that's the spatial function, r theta phi. A spin function, which for normalization is alpha 1, beta 2, minus alpha 2, one. This is, looks like this. It is, um, <clears throat> let's see, it is the total spin is equal to zero. It's what we call a singlet state. Singlet because there's only one possible way that I can put the aligned ele electrons. Okay, well, so far, nothing unusual here, right? We, I've just gone through, done a lot of fancy labeling and things. The next step is going to be, or what's the helium first excited state? And by the way, if you have questions, please raise your hand. I'm not going to try to figure out. At some point, I'll try to figure out how to, if you want to communicate during the lecture. But right now, you're all here. So it's just, don't you interrupt me. Okay. Um, Somehow I have this image that you'll be texting back and forth to yourself saying, what the hell is he talking about right now? I don't know, but he won't answer the little buzzer and trying to get him to pay attention. So helium excited state. So what do I mean when I write 1s1, 2s1? Well, what's the problem with, what is the problem with uh, 1s, 1, 1s, 2, whoops, 2s, what's the problem? This is a good exam question. What's the problem with this? I can distinguish the electrons. Just, it, it doesn't work because the electrons are distinguishable. I'm saying that electron one is in, excuse me, electron one is in, um, yeah, don't write the team and say that your professor's belching in the classroom and, and, and didn't, I, I covered my mouth with that. It's, so this is distinguishable. So I have, <clears throat> so, So 
So what do I need to do? I'm going to take combinations. 1s, 1, just like we did for the plus 1s, 2, 2s, 1, and 1s, 1, 2s, 2, minus 1s, 2, 2s, 1. So there's my strategies for what I've got faced with indistinguishability with indistinguishability. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take plus and minus combinations. Now, <clears throat> this one is symmetric with the permutation operator. This one is anti-symmetric. So where am I going to go with this? Well, for the let's start with the symmetric one. If you remember, you've got somewhere in your notes, hopefully, you wrote down the different spin functions. And so I have, I'm going to break these up into spatial and spin. So my spatial function, so 1s, 1, 2s, 2, minus 1s, 2, 2s, 1. And that is going to have to have a 1 over 2 in front of it for normalization. The spin function is going to be the so this is uh, this is I'm going to back up a second here let's let's see this is the let's start with a symmetric one so this is symmetric how many possibilities do I have for, so what must the spin function be the total wave function is the spin function times the spatial function. So the spin function is going to be anti-symmetric. And this is, so this is just what we did before, 1 over 2, uh, alpha 1, theta 2, minus alpha 2, theta 1. That, in very simple notation, would look like this. This very, we'll see, the simple notation doesn't work. Breaks down for one of these pieces that I've got. Um, what about anti-symmetric? So if I look at the ones below here, these are all going to be anti-symmetric. And these will be, so we've got the, um, this is going to be 1s, 1 over root 2, 1s, 1, 2s, 2, minus 1s, 2, 2s, 1. And now the spin functions are symmetric. Well, it turns out I've got three choices. I've got alpha one, theta, excuse me, alpha one, alpha two. I've got alpha one, theta two plus alpha two, theta one. And I've got Theta one, theta two. So if I look at 
these three states, what I find is that, I'm gonna do this without, without proof, but I'm gonna write S and SZ. So S is the total electron spin, and SZ is the Z component of total electron spin. All of these have spin one. And SZ, these are, so here's, um, if I draw my 1S and 2S states, this one looks like this, SZ is equal to plus one. If they're both down, then this is minus one, but there's this one in the middle and it's zero. And there's not a good way to represent it like that with these arrows. See, these arrows are incomplete. This is called triplet state. Unpaired electrons. Um, the magnitude of the electron spin vector is equal to one, one plus one h bar. For any angular momentum, let's remember we used, uh, if angular momentum is L, then that it's L, L plus one, H bar, works for any angular momentum. This is just S. So this is a total, total spin. The electrons are in the same direction. And so in this case, S, magnitude of vector, the quantum number is equal to one. Um, SZ, Magnitude is actually nah, not even magnitude. SZ is good has uh, the quantum number has values from minus s to plus s in intervals of one, and therefore has values of minus one, zero, plus one which is why it's called a triplet state. If you take the, there are three different states. So again, total electron spin is one. For a single electron is one half. I add another electron, I can go opposite it, in which case it's zero, or I can add them together, in which case it's one. As with any other vector, angular momentum vector, if I have a length one, then I have Z component of one, zero, minus one. What happens if I put that into a magnetic field? What happens if I put that into a magnetic field? Well, the electron spin is a magnetic moment it's either going with the field, against the field, or perpendicular to the field. And so I have triplet 1s1, 1s2. Well, let's, I can't really write it that way. Triplet 1s1, 1s1, 2s1. Energy but then in a B field, what's going to happen is it splits into three possibilities. Yes. Uh, 
one plus one. So for any angular momentum, so there's a quantum number and a value. The quantum number, so the value magnitude is the quantum number plus the quantum number plus one times h bar. Um, if I take a single electron in orbital angular momentum in a d orbital, l is equal to two, and so the angular momentum is two times <clears throat> There's something bothering me about this. It wasn't coming up with an answer I wanted. I started talking d over the I knew the answer was square root of six times h bar. Uh, 